Hey guys, Joe Pye, welcome back. You know, I recently accepted a job here at the shop, and if the jobs that you take or the jobs that you do or anything like mine, they always look bigger in the drawing, they always look bigger in the model. And when you start to put the numbers to the material, you find out that sometimes whew, part's kind of small or flimsy or whatever. So I just accepted a job recently that looks exactly like this piece behind me, and it's black Delrin. Now let me put some dimensions on this thing to show you how small this is. This is 094 thick here. This is 078 here. So that's two millimeters in the middle. Uh, these are three millimeter diameter holes. The whole thing is just about an inch long, so it's not very big. And it's 10 millimeters wide here. So it's not a very large part. It's incredibly flexible, and I have to make a hundred of these. So it's not a difficult part. The majority of the part is accessible from one side, except for this center cutout is a mirror feature, so you've got to flip it over. And that's, uh, that adds a little bit of difficulty to it. You could strap it down, you could mill it, but boy, when you've got to start flipping it over and jerking around, time is money, right? So I'm going to do what is called, or what I call, a dog bone approach on this part. Now, a dog bone approach in my world, in my mind, is when you support a part that you're working on with grip stock, but symmetrical grip stock about the ends of the part. So now the part is going to look like this. And you can see why I call it a dog bone, because it's exactly what it looks like when you get to the end of the day. Well, that's pretty ugly, huh? Anyway, you can see how the part fits in there. It's real easy to clamp on these pieces, whether you clamp on the top with toe clamps or whether you hold it in a vise, flip it over. This part can be done 50-50 with the material on the ends, and in the final operation, you can squeeze it in the center and lop the ends off, and you have a finished part, which is exactly the way I plan to do this job. But making 100 of these, you can't handle 100 pieces, so what's the next best thing? Make it in a strip. Make a really long piece and make a bunch of these all at one time and come back in with a cutter, come between them, and then you have what looks like a railroad track when you're done. And the next phase on that, cut them all off, hang them from pins, 20, 30 at a time, squeeze them in a little fixture and cut the ends off. This is a great way to proceed on a difficult part dog bone, symmetrical grip stock, uh, in plastic, aluminum, whatever. The time that this process will save you is pretty incredible. And it's a good way to do round stock in a mill vise with a bunch of V-blocks too. You can do strange things to round material that you would never be able to hold conventionally. So dog bone material, let's take a walk out to the CNC mill. I'll show you the setup, I'll show you the fixture, and we'll look at some parts. This is how the material's been prepped. Now when you have plastic or any type of material and you start chopping out long sections out of one side, you can bet that the material is going to react. It's going to bow, it's going to crown, it's just not going to be pretty. So whatever kind of fixture you design for your job, make sure you take that into consideration. This piece was actually flip-flopped only twice and I know that the first side was trapped so well that I could trust the features in relationship to the raw material. Now when I cut the second side, it had a tendency to not give me what I thought I was going to see because of the bowing of the material. But the fixture itself pulls this down nicely and the even removal of material from both sides helps to stabilize the material and return it to being flat. This is a plus or minus five job, but this particular center relief uh, configuration is currently right around plus or minus one, plus or minus one and a half. And this is Black Delrin, so it's uh, 
It's pretty tough to do if you were to do it any other way. Let's take a look at the fixture and take a look at the final procedure here. I think you're going to like it. Here's the fixture we're going to use. The prepared blanks slide right in here like a drawer. There's a tooling hole in here that you indicate so that you know where this fixture is in relationship to the program the next time you set the job up. And we have relief cuts in the end so I can get a micrometer under the part and measure my features as I am machining them. Let's pop a part in here, press the go button and watch it happen. The part is loaded. You can see a pretty good cross section of how the fixture works. And why I refer to this as a dog bone. I'm going to pop 42 holes in this real quick and then put the slices in and let's see what happens. These are incremental moves, which means I do not have every one of these holes defined in the program. The machine is just told to move X distance between centers and loop the code that drills the hole. So this is a very short program to do this. There's an awful lot of information contained here, but if you use incremental moves in conjunction with your absolute positioning, you can get the job done real quick. The incremental shift needed to go in before the actual drill cycle, so we go beyond the part and come back to the holes, and we're drilling the downside at this moment. We'll let this finish out, come back to the slicing operation. also an incremental move. The coat itself is just loop. This process finishes both sides of two parts. Actually one side of two parts with each pass. Small X shift. Everything is climb cut because it just doesn't leave any birds with a nice sharp cutter. Let it play out and we're going to come back when all the slots are in. I'll give you a real-time reading from the monitor as well. Okay, the machine just finished up. Let's load off see what we got. Beauty. I'm happy with that. Real-time. 5 minutes 55 seconds, 21 pieces, 42 holes, and 21 slots, 6 minutes, not bad. Okay, here's a quick look at the before and after. You'll notice the registration mark on the parts. It's a real good idea if you have a fixture and you have to take the piece out of the fixture, make sure it goes back in the fixture the exact same way. So you can see all the work that was done on both pieces. This is a 3 8 2 flute carbide end mill, about 4,000 RPM, 40 inches a minute, and it gives me a nice finish. 
So we'll run this back piece across the saw, front and rear, put two pins in all of these, squeeze them together, and finish the length. Done. Very pleased with the results of that fixture. Okay, it is time to separate the parts from the carrier, from the nest, from the dog bone. I have an aluminum ripstop fence set up on my bandsaw. Because the dog bone material will have a tendency as the parts release, the parts are going to want to spring down because they're a different height. I also have a uh, riser to support the actual part, it's almost close enough to the dog bone. So it supports the part more than a dog bone, but it allows me to bank up against this. And we're going to cut these off here pretty quick. Okay, there you go guys. All we need to do is mount this in the next fixture on a pair of pins. Use the pins as the locator feature. Since the part is rough and asymmetrical at this point, lengthwise anyhow, it's very symmetrical this way. And we'll just finish the ends off. Let's take a look at how that's done. Okay guys, this is the fixture for the final operation. It is a simple aluminum block. These bosses here are sized to the exact distance between the pins so that it's basically self-centering. All I need to do is tram this and establish a center line in the machine. And the whole idea here is we're going to come down with an end mill, sweep the outside, jump the fixture, sweep the outside on the opposite side, and we are done. Now this is a no-brainer little fixture. It should work very well. Doing 15 pieces at a time. Piece of cake. Very simple. Let's put this in the mill, set it up, and watch it pass. Okay, guys, here's the final setup 15 pieces smashed between two aluminum plates, centered by the bosses on the fixture. Let's push the go button and see how long this takes. Seven seconds. Try to say, not bad. The finish on the ends is beautiful. Both sides, 15 pieces, 27 seconds. 
Too bad I don't have a thousand of these to make. Okay, guys, that's it. Job's finished. All right, guys, well, I think that you can see the benefit of creating a part with that particular dog bone technique. It has served me well over the years, and it should serve you well as well. But be sure that once you take your piece to that part where you're going to lop the ends off, that you're done holding that part and addressing all the features that you needed, because that is also a one-way part. It will not be going back into fixture that you built initially, and you don't want to waste time building a bunch of different fixtures because you made a mistake. So plan ahead. Anyway, that's all I got. I hope you like what you saw. Try it. It works very well. Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.